with all those student loans and skyrocketing house prices. Even if you have 100,000 salary, it doesn't feel like enough to ever make it. After all, you're technically low income in SF where you have your programming job. So you've been working from home and over time you got very efficient at doing your job. On one hand, you could work harder, but what's the point? You can't really get a promotion for two more years. So what you end up doing is mostly browsing Reddit and playing video games after you finish your work for the day, which only takes you a few hours. That is until you stumble upon a website called overemployed. Com. Turns out there's a massive group of people, mostly programmers, working multiple jobs at the same time, with some working up to five jobs at once, earning over a million dollars a year. So yes, I had two full-time remote six-figure positions at the same time. They didn't know about each other and it completely changed my life. This overemployed says is the real door to financial freedom freeing yourself from layoffs and office politics, improving your mental health, and even looking forward to that day where you get fired and you get a severance package. But why are these people mostly programmers? Well, it's not just because a lot of programming jobs were remote even before COVID, but you also get uniquely good compensation and programming environments, especially agile ones, they're results oriented, meaning you don't have to clock in and clock out as long as you get your work done. So we're going to dive into the dark arts of being overemployed, how people are pulling this off with a five step plan and pushing the limits of what's possible with up to five jobs. By the end, you'll be able to decide if this is a justifiable symptom of a broken system or you'll have the moral high ground to judge these reprehensible individuals. This is how to become overemployed. Just 8% of tech workers are feeling confident in their job and 92% are insecure, said the CEO of the company Blind. And more than 32,000 people have been laid off from the tech industry this year, according to TechCrunch. Companies are looking out for their own survival and the casualty is often people's livelihood. And no one is gonna do that for you as the individual. So to take things into your own hands and become financially free, you decide to become overemployed. Here's a five-step plan to do that. Now, to be clear, I don't endorse doing this or think it's ethical, and we're gonna come full circle by the end. Step one is overcoming the barriers, both practical and ethical. Carl Janssen on Quora wrote, I don't understand how it'd be possible to have two jobs. He points out that what if your two companies schedule a conflicting meeting? Well, Overemployed's got your back because they have a cheat sheet of meeting excuses, how to reschedule, and even how to join two at the same time. One of the excuses rated very effective is saying you're putting down your head to work more. It can even work in your favor and get your reputation as someone who doesn't like to waste time. As for joining two meetings at once, well, one technique is to wear a headphone in each ear and then mute microphones back and forth when you, for example, hear your name. Other workers have gotten more creative and used virtual assistants who send them a message when they need to reply in one chat or the other. Skeptics also say, can you really keep up the facade of working four hours a day when everyone else is working eight? Well, you have to be okay with being below average at one of your jobs and the very real possibility of getting fired at any time. But for a lot of companies, a low productivity engineer given the difficulty to find one is better than having no engineer at all, but we'll come back to that. Okay, let's move on to step two because not every job is gonna be good for overemployment. In fact, some companies are gonna find out very quickly and those are the ones you wanna avoid. Anytime you get a red flag of micromanagement, that's when you wanna back off and maybe not go for that one. The consensus is contractor jobs are better because they pay you higher cash and usually equity is not gonna pay for a period of time. So if you do end up getting fired, you wanna get as much as possible up front. Now here's where it gets interesting. Even if you're a medium or senior skill level, you want to go for jobs that are punching below your weight. And the reason is people want to think you're less skilled than you actually are, so you can be more productive with less time. It's very tempting to go for two extremely high paying jobs, but it's better to have two or even three jobs that pay slightly less because when you add them together, you're still going to make more salary. In other words, adding two junior positions together is going to be higher than one senior position. You can join and the expectations are going to be lower, so you can work below 
below your maximum output from day one. Interestingly, when getting that second job, some fall into it by chance. An anonymous software engineer told the Economic Times that he was interviewing for jobs and got two different remote offers. So instead of turning one down, he just said, hey, let's give this a try. And he's been working for two non-conflicting Silicon Valley companies ever since, but the thought of termination does keep him up at night. Now for step three, the legal implications. According to Richard Greenberg, New York City employment lawyer, working two jobs is not illegal by default. Well, at least it's not criminal. That is, unless you sign an NDA and end up sharing code, or if you sign a non-compete and you work for two competing companies. This same attorney also said you would have to be pretty dumb to get caught. So, but realistically, the worst that's probably gonna happen is you get fired, which is the next step, which is creating a risk reward trade-off in your head. In other words, thinking what is the worst that's gonna happen? So I got caught. I tried to work two full-time jobs at the same time uh, and they found out. Yes, people do get caught, but sometimes can even frame it as a positive. According to Jerome Cookier on Quora, there's so many companies out there you can just burn bridges and cut ties even if the worst case scenario happens. It's most interesting here to return that guy who is earning 1.3 million a year with more than five jobs. What he said is you just have to be super confident and protect your time. Then if you do get caught, you just don't have to care at all. If you never stop interviewing, you can go into each job expecting to get fired. Then the ones that really don't notice if you don't do work, those are the ones you'll be left with at the end. Just keep it moving. Now, while this guy seems extremely naturally stress tolerant, not all of us are. So step number five is dealing with the stress on an ongoing basis. And this one's not gonna be so positive, so you might wanna turn off the video now if you're thinking of doing this seriously. One Temple University student had a bitter experience saying, please don't try this, you will fail. As I tried working two jobs remotely, and despite being in different time zones, the stand-up meetings, that is the daily meetings, were at the same time. Needless to say, it raised my anxiety levels and made me look like a fool. Now I quit one of the jobs and I feel much better because the day you could get caught could be any day. But imagine this, what if your company found out and they actually didn't care? Or what if you told them? So for the past six or seven months, my manager knew that I was working full time for another company and still let me keep my job working for him. A YouTuber Random Tech Thoughts said, just inform your employer, stress is gonna eat you alive if you don't. And they might need you enough where it would be okay. I mean, think about how many people a manager has to interview to hire someone, and they also have to pay for those jobs. A recruiter's probably getting paid, and maybe even a recruitment agency too. And keep in mind, most people in the company don't wanna do more work, just like you. But if we think too long down that thread, it can bring us to a sobering realization. The people on the other side of this raw deal are people too. And chances are your engineering manager was at one point just like you and is not an evil corporate overlord. Engineering manager Chris Hansen hired a new programmer and noticed he was acting strange, missing meetings without excuses. He soon found out this person had not left their previous job. So how did this manager play this situation? Well, he was extremely angry, but he didn't actually say anything because in his words, it would have been like cutting his own arm off. Better to have someone than no one. And you gotta feel bad for this engineering manager or any product managers too, because if you get one or more of these people on your team, well, your projects are not gonna get completed. Not to mention the most innovative companies of our time, things that improve our life like Airbnb, while they didn't get to where they were by having a lot of people who were just trying not to get fired. There could also be a situation where the other programmers on your team have to pick up your slack and the resentment is definitely going to grow over time if they're pulling more weight than you are, especially on the same salary. While the overemployed movement is definitely an interesting case study, the reasons for it affecting the people around you, affecting a company who's giving you a shot and is trusting you to deliver more value than they're paying you, as well as not just living your life trying to squeeze out value, but creating a body of work and career that you can look back on and be proud of. Now that could be important to you too, or this could all be overshadowed by the fact that getting to financial freedom can lead you to the life you actually wanna be living, even if you gotta step on some toes on the way. So what do you think? Is it justified or not? Let me know your reasons in a comment. I'm sure there'll be some arguments down there. And I hope you enjoy this peek into the world of the overemployed. I'll see you next time for more tech stories.